Hey guys, I'm Tim. I'm Bob. I'm Spencer. I'm Dan. And this is the Board Game Rundown. Today we are going to review Ghostbusters Men in Black Ecto Terrestrial Invasion. Good job. By IDW Games. <laughs> that is a mouthful. It is. Uh, this is one to four players. Says like 75 minutes. I could definitely see once you understand the rules how like an hour, hour and a half is probably yeah, pretty realistic. For sure. Pretty realistic. This feels like an hour and a half game to me. Yep. I will say. Do not let this fun, colorful, cartoony <laughs> picture fool you. This is a hard game. Brutal. Not yeah. hard to learn. No. Uh, but you, okay, so this is like, this in the rules, it's like, oh, it's semi-co-op. You're, you're kind of trying to have your team, and your team is going, to be consi- is going to consist of one Ghostbuster and one MIB agent. And uh, you guys are basically like paired up, and you're trying to do the best job in the scenario. And that all, all that's really going to do is get you some extra money in between scenarios so then when you can buy more items and things like that. We, I think, took it a little too seriously, <laughs> seriously? Uh, to start. Yeah. Especially Spencer, who was like... I made one move. It was a big move. <laughs> it was a big move. A move. <laughs> Dan was all set up to do a thing, and then Spencer's like, mm, I think I want to do that. And then proceeded to complain about how his dudes were getting killed over oh, I, in that I, corner I, I, the I pulled, rest of the game. I pulled him out of the dangerous situation and right. took it up myself. I would have uh, <laughs> handled the situation. Ah! I'm Agent K. Many years of, uh, you know. Wow. Right. And so this has, uh, this does not disappoint with the character options. Uh, oh, you yeah. can be any of the core Ghostbusters, Winston, Peter, Ray, Egon. Yeah. You've got Agent K, Chief Zed. Agent J and, and, L. and L and there's like bonus characters and then there's the bonus characters you could be Frank the the dog uh, there's Jeebs uh, there are worm guys who I loved yeah. to, what would have loved to have been uh, there's Lewis Janine and also Slimer wow, as other nice. options and they've all got unique uh, character car- like weapon starting yeah, weapon cards yeah. and Ooh. stuff like that Man, so they give you extra good. things <laughs> so <laughs> they've got different health different defense so it's asymmetric yep, depending on nice. and you can Mix and match your characters. Now, if you're playing a campaign, you're going to play like the same character, you know, like the mm-hmm. same team uh, moving, you know, going through. Scenario, scenario. But but I guess to me, having all of these options, even if we're like, oh, we're just going to play scenario one because I'm teaching the game. Mm-hmm. At least you could try out enough different combinations. Right. Yeah. Because you, if you play at max player count, you're using eight characters and there's two, four, six extra that are not getting used. So there, there's a lot of potential for combinations, Maybe. right? Yeah. Um, which is pretty good. And also, we didn't know what we were doing when we chose our combination. No, we just grabbed some. <laughs> yeah, we just grabbed people we liked and whoever was left over when the pile was handed to us and stuff. And, yep. and, and when, when in playing a game like this, uh, I have no interest in like trying to maximize my synergy between my characters. Like, right. I just want to... Especially the first time. Yeah, like, well, I just want to see how these... Sure, I just want to see how these guys play. I guess if you're going like, okay, this scenario is really tough. Right. We've been getting our butts kicked. Like, let's try this. Right, yeah. But we, we just kind of were like, oh, we like these guys. Let's try a thing. Yeah. And see what happens. Because, yep. like, uh, Venkman's ability only mattered one time in yeah, this scenario. Yeah, I saw that ability, and I did not like that ability. I just grabbed it because it was the Bill Murray character. Yeah, Egon's so ability never mattered. But if I had known that, like, <laughs> Slimer... <laughs> we weren't paying that much attention when we grabbed the characters. So if I knew I could have been Slimer or Lewis, like, I might have oh, been be cool. one of them just to be one of them. Or, like, the Worm guys kind of love them. Right. They can Slimer assign the damage from their attacks to a, two additional squares within range. It's my favorite band. Wow. So they oh, just yeah. kind of fire in all directions. Right. And they had three defense die, which is nice. <sighs> it is nice. Because they're small. They, are small. they only got three health. Because they're small. Uh, so, <laughs> so in the book, there's like, what, four, four, scenarios? four scenarios, but that's not entirely accurate. There's scenario one. And a then, and B. So chapter one has that A. Yeah. So you can choose mm-hmm. either one A or one B to start with. And once you win that one, you move on to the boss battle for chapter one. Then you move, you do either chapter 2A or 2B, and then move on. So it's got a little diagram of how you would do that. Oh, right. sure. It, it just, it like just, it just those. makes this a bit more replayable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You can kind of choose door two instead of. Right. Two. Right. Yeah. Right. You should always switch. Yeah. So, you know, anyways, there's a, there's a ton of minis talking mm-hmm. about components. There's a ton of little bits. Yep. The cardboard bits are all fine. Uh, the player boards are. They're fine. I mean, they're, you know, they're not like the most amazing thing yeah, I've ever seen, but they're not like overproduced, but they, you know. Oh, well, they're definitely not overproduced. <laughs> no. Uh, the cards are fine. Cards are decent quality. Yep, rounded corners. That's good. Uh, there's decent little player boards. The player aids are almost, are almost great. Yeah. But almost. what they need, it's the same on both sides. 
So what they need to do, because most games will do this, you have your player phase, and yeah. then you've got like your boss phase, right? Yeah, or, or combat, how combat works, or, or right. anything. Defeat works. something else, putting the same information <laughs> yeah, on both sides. what is the both point? Because trust me, defeat happens a lot. Well, yeah. <laughs> see, this way I know what to do on my turn, and the table knows exactly what I'm going to do on right. my turn. Right. It's right. pointless. Yeah. Right. So uh, that could be better. That could be better. But I think at that point I'm kind of nitpicking a little because See, and Spencer said something that I have seen games do before. It's actually kind of what I did in Dune, to where um I only printed enough copies of the player boards to put one between each pair of characters in Dune. Mm -hmm. And so with a double sided one, you could put it on a standee or something, stand it up. That kind of makes sense. I still wouldn't understand it. But they gave enough player aids for every player. Yeah, so fine. having it double sided is Useless. It is right. zero percent use. Well, I don't know what side I'm on though. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's fifty percent use because yeah. you go both sides. <laughs> the other <laughs> side is zero percent use. You get these little um, doohickeys here with a circle in it to yep. help keep track of your points throughout the game, mm -hmm. uh, and those are nice. But like, I think like a clip or something. I mean, it if, does if, kind of yeah, bounce. If we're kind of jumping around. into the idea of components, yeah. Uh, we'll start the components. Th this yeah. this game is one hundred percent. In like two weeks, you're going to see people on Etsy and stuff with things so that like snap layovers, onto your yeah, yeah, yeah snap yeah, on and lay over, and then everything lays on hundred percent because there's so move. many things that go on your player board, and most of it doesn't matter. Like these don't really matter as long as yeah. you're in the general area. I know how many I have. As long as right. you know this stuff and these. But like the cl the specific. clip is pretty important, and yeah. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna do that, there's gonna be people like what you have for Terraform Mars, where it's just a yeah. thin thing that lays over. Or even Zombicide, Zombicide, and yep. Future Edition started putting out the overlay. Yeah, thing those are like you can really slide. fancy. Yeah. <laughs> <are> really fancy <laughs> that you can slide your character sheet into. Yeah, correct. But I mean, th these make sense. No, yeah, yeah, and I love the layout of them. Mm -hmm. I love the two characters and the stats and everything. Yeah, it's really nice looking. Obviously, this was well made. Yep, that yeah. not only is that well made, what an awesome idea. So the works. mechanic of the dice tower is so good because yep. there's these this ship, this alien ship is crashed into the Ghostbusters tower or building. And so you're you're populating it with these dice, and at any time, at any time, if a die rolls out of there, you bump the table. You you yeah. slip, put <laughs> that did happen. If somebody puts their dice down too hard on the table mm -hmm. and their dice come the pouring dice out, it. Uh, yeah. Or if you're rolling wildly and it's anytime something comes out, then they're going to start to spawn. <laughs> and I just really, like that. Yeah. <laughs> really thought that that was cool oh, that and, a, and a really fun way. You've already uh, pulled out. To use the game. I yeah. just love that as the game's going on, the pieces of the ship are falling out of the building and more Monsters aliens are, are out rushing them, out yeah. of and the And they're all different, actually, pieces of a ship. They are. <laughs> yeah, which is pretty mm -hmm. neat. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. there's there's a bunch of different map tiles you're going to build, you know, depending on your board, depending on whatever your scenario is. We just played the opening or one of the opening, 1A or 1B, mm -hmm. yeah. right? We played 1A. There's also, there's only three alien types in the base game, right. and I didn't feel like it got old at all. Yeah. I, I, they all felt totally different. Yep. Um, the way that you were fought each of the three was totally fine with me. I, mm -hmm. didn't, I didn't see any issue with that. Yeah. Well, it's nice, like the minion types. It's nice yeah, that yeah, you can, yeah. uh, that when you, you're basically, you're, when you're firing, you're, you're attacking, you're just attacking a square. Right, you're shooting in that area. So if you've got a square with like a, a combination of critters in there, you've got a good chance that, well, you're going to hit something. Yeah. Uh, dependent on the, and I like the way that the occupancy works, right? So at each square yeah, can only hold so much. Can only hold mass. <laughs> can only hold basically four models. So the drainers, these big guys, count as two. So so you can strategically move some stuff around or spawn things so you can block where the drainers are. It gonna is a it is a little strange in a game like this, especially when you compare it to games that do similar things like Imperial Assault or Zombicide and stuff. It is weird that they made the alien who takes up two spaces have the same size base oh, as sure. everyone else. Oh, sure. And yet, arms, the, uh, do the heroes have a bigger base? Or that's just the circle. Yeah, so it's everyone has the same size base. And I d most games would just make their well, base yeah, slightly, bigger. Does, slightly bigger. Imperial does the larger. Yeah, yeah but on this um, one, um, the arms can take up either side. That's These true. Right. Clearly stay that's true. On their a base. bigger model. Yeah, yeah, no, it's very easy to tell. It's sure. just weird that they didn't do it. I guess yeah. they were just like, eh, they're the biggest monster people understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, because these guys actually do take up a whole thing. Yeah, so, yeah. The yeah. boss guys. Yeah, the yeah. boss guys. Right. So Stay Puff over here is super cute. Uh, but anyways, so I mean, without getting like a ton into gameplay and every, it, the gameplay is actually relatively straightforward. You're gonna get a series of actions you can take on your turn. Mm -hmm. uh, you might provoke attacks from different critters. Then after you do, after everybody is gone, then you're gonna draw from the hot sheets, which is a, the uh, the Weekly World News deck or whatever. Yeah. You know where the, you get the all the stories, and then you're going to resolve 
You're going to resolve uh, the effects of the card, and then it might also move your PKE up. Mm -hmm. So it, it might have a symbol indicating one of the one of the uh, minions, right? One of the one of the aliens that you're fighting, whether it is a uh, a grunt, a shooter, or a drainer. And so that moves up. And if they move up, uh, then at the end of the hot sheets phase, because you you might draw more than one card depending on player count and who's been knocked out and different things or cards that make you draw more cards. Then you, for each one that is at three, you're going to pull out one of the sides of one of the spaceship pieces out of the building. And when you do that, it, it, it potentially is going to have dice drop out. And I'm assuming that the losing condition in most scenarios is if you can't pull out, uh, one of the spaceship yeah. tokens, right? Yeah, probably. I think it's when the last one gets pulled. Is that it something about the building collapses? Yeah, the building collapses. Collapse collapse something. Something. Right. But I mean, I'm, I'm assuming the other scenarios, right. that is going to be an automatic lose. I, yeah. I assume. And we were able it to seems calculate. like a, a key mechanic. Yeah, like on ours, uh, every time you turned in a certain item, mm -hmm. you pulled another one out. So we were able to calculate how many of these could we actually let pull out before we can't win. And that's what determined how we lost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. We're like, well, we've lost too many now once we deposit our last thing. Right. I mean, I only pulled out one and it was for completing an objective. So I, I, uh, you also didn't kill much of anything. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, who was the employee of the month? That's right. <laughs> That's right. Right here. Yeah. Um, but the nice thing, though, thing Spencer tried to is mess with <laughs> even, yeah. even though we lost, we would each gain so much money. Yep, and right. then from that, we can buy upgrade equipment yep. and upgrade our gear and then Next play years. through the scenario again yeah, with I, better gear. Yeah. I love I love that in in scenario games where it's not just when you lose a scenario, well, try again. You know, I love that there's some kind of end game to the scenario. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, uh, while, yeah, like playing this again might be the correct thing, but also it's like, okay, we lost that battle. We could take our money and move on to the next scenario and play like mm -hmm. we just lost that battle. So like, I like that. Um, th this game has, I was going to put this in uh, final thoughts, but I guess really quick I'll say before the rating. Um, this game has a very similar problem for me as uh, Dead of Winter. <laughs> you don't okay. like Dead of Winter is designed in a way to play competitively, and there is no reason to ever play Dead of Winter competitively. Just play it cooperatively. It's hard enough, you right. know? <laughs> and and the, the, this game, even more so than Dead of Winter, has it really built in to be competitive, and it just doesn't feel like it needs that at all. Like, mm. I, at the end of the game, I had a full hand of four gadget cards, and every single one was steal two things from an opponent, a hero discards all their things, you know, um... Uh, they discard their traps, and I gain one point for every trap they discard. Like, yeah, I could negate I, somebody's attack and move that hero. Yeah, square, like, like some squares. of that could be helpful. Like if somebody's about to die, you could take all their stuff. Yeah, so yeah, that's true. Stuff, that's just clearly very, not what yeah. they have in mind with it. Like it, it, the game is really like, here's how you can hurt your friends. And I just sat on these cards the whole game because I was like, we're getting our butt kicked, right? you know? And <laughs> Dead of Winter is very similar to where I, I've. I never play with the trader in Dead of Winter. You just you flip the objective card over to the harder objective, and you're like, "Hey, we'll probably lose anyway." You know, we don't mm -hmm. need a trader. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's a that's a that's a knock for me. I just feel like the game is too centered around being semi cooperative well, right, right, right. when it I didn't need to be. So I guess you say centered. I guess the cards. I didn't Some have near cards. as many of those cards because I was sure. going to say the and that's rule bad book luck too. Sure, the rule book makes it sound like it's more competitive, but I felt like once we were playing and we. Once we realized maybe we shouldn't be playing as competitively and actually just team up, like things started going a lot better. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it was way too late. Yeah, the team up attack is super helpful. Th that's what I'm saying. I and guess, what I would that... almost do is what they do, uh, like in a game we played recently, where it's like with the hidden trader, where it's like the first round. Don't even look at the hidden trader cards. Everybody just play cooperatively, oh, like sure. straight for a round. So like the first scenario, I would almost say, I mean, keep track of employee of the week, but don't worry about. I think employee of the week is fine. It's just the the gadgets that are extremely versus. That's yeah. what, that's that's yeah. my point. Yeah. I'm trying to say is that the gadgets seem very uh, competitive, and the rule book, like you said, kind of hints towards playing competitively. Right. But then you play the game, and you're like, why? Yeah. Why is yeah. everything centered around know, that? We didn't add monster monsters to the yeah. Uh, this was the, the end game was, state. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, behind now the Bob has played all a card. The dead guys. Bob, yeah, always well, Bob, Bob played a card that knocked everybody down. Yeah. I know. That allowed some free, freedom of movement, which is yeah. nice. But uh, but anyways, also, so you get overwhelmed very easily. Some of these cards make them spawn, so you can you know yeah. the best well the best laid pl uh, I best can't laid speak. plans yeah. best laid plans of mice and men often go awry, and in this case that was very true. We would yeah. plan things out, and all of a sudden, nope. Can't do it. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it did seem like the turn order was always one off exactly of what we needed. Like, yeah. oh, if Bob went first this turn, this would have yeah. happened, but yeah. he's second. Oh, yeah. I'm last. I'm I need to go first in order to set this yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that happened a lot. Yes, right. yes. Uh, so we are going to review this. Dan, how does our review system work? So we rate games from 1 to 10, and uh, we'll each give our own personal opinion, but that's a lot of numbers thrown at you, and you might agree with one person more and blah, blah, blah. So we give those, but also if you're on, like, Board Game Geek or Facebook and stuff like that, and you ask for our rating, we're not going to throw four numbers out because that's confusing. So we will average them all together and give you one rating that we put on sites like that. All right. All right. Bobby. Me? Oh, I think you're going to come in first. I'm not <laughs> ready. I've been thinking about it this whole time, too. I'm good, I think, uh, if you want me to jump in. Go for it, Dan. I, sure. I'm gonna, I'll listen to what you have So to there's say. a lot of pros yeah. and and uh, not a lot, but like there's a decent amount of cons, I think, uh, but uh, more pros for sure. I enjoyed the game. I like that it's kind of like a more interesting Zombicide to me. Mm-hmm. I, I was saying that word a lot while we were playing. It has a lot of feelings for me. I've only played Zombicide once, but it has a lot of feelings for me from my experience with Zombicide, but in a, but in a way funner, more interesting theme to me. I'm honestly not even a huge Ghostbusters fan, which a lot of people crap on me about. It's it's fine. There's but so then many mixing other reasons with, to crap on you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. <laughs> but uh, but then mix that with Men in Black and have this interesting partner mechanic that's mm-hmm. going in there and stuff. Like I like that theme a lot. I love the art style. Uh, again, components overall are good. There's a lot of chits in this game. Um, but you know, you don't want the game to be three hundred dollars, so that's fine. So um, so I mean, I w- I would recommend trying this game out if you like those kind of games. It's it's really fun, great insert, like we yeah, said. Yeah, really good insert. Lots of positives here overall. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop this on uh, seven point five. Again, okay. there's there's stuff that I don't enjoy with this one, and I probably wouldn't seek it out myself. Um, but I would. But if someone said, hey, is that a good game? Do you think I'd like it? I'd list some things from the game. Do you like those things? Check it out. It's a fun game. Like that, that's, that's probably where I would come down on it. That was, it's funny because that's it's pretty much what I was leaning toward, and, and I do agree. There's a lot of good going on. Um, I, it's unfortunate about the clip thing on the top because that bumped around a few times on me, and that was a little um, mm-hmm. unfortunate. I like the little cheater card here for the, yeah. oh, that was the very monsters. Useful, yeah. That was super helpful. Um, it is very versus when it doesn't need to be that versus. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Dan is correct. Seven and a half is a pretty good score. I think I'm going to give it a seven and a half as well. I would recommend it. I don't think it's one I'm going to rush out and buy. Mm-hmm. I've got a lot of games that play similarly to it, but if Tim wants to play Ghostbusters, I like. I do enjoy the team up thing. I like how you have guys from different ones, and they have different things, right? So the men in black are better at taking them out, and the Ghostbusters guys can move. Yeah, the so you got to control. That. Yeah, it's yeah, that's super cool. It's very on theme. Yeah, well, yeah. and even like uh, what the the noisy crickets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> like if you roll a crit, if he yeah. rolls a crit, it moves him back. Yeah, yeah. Because I love it. I mean. Mm. Yeah, it's very yeah. it's very thematic. Yeah, um, you know what? It's a ten. Not just yeah, kidding. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just from noisy. No, I, I, I think seven and a half is a good score. Right? Like I said, it doesn't need to be his versus. Maybe uh, take out some of the versus cards. That's true. Yeah. You know what I mean, and just not this use them because yeah. once we started playing more as a team, we started doing a lot better. Yeah, we, <laughs> and yeah, I felt did. like the experience yeah. went up it, too. Yeah, yeah I, sure. I agree. I it, it feels like it ramped a lot. Man, obviously we haven't played it. We've only played it at four players, but everything seemed to happen at the four player mark. So yeah, like three players are only drawing half as many cards. So we were at the most. Like yeah, great job bringing that up. Bob said during yeah. the game, this feels like a three-player game. Like, yeah, like, like a sweet spot. Because yeah. it plays mm-hmm. one to four, so by yourself is fine, but you'd have a lot coming at you. But with three players, you'd be facing the same amount of monsters, basically. So at four, it ramped up, and we were facing a lot more. We added an extra die every time we were spawning. You know, mm-hmm. so, yeah, and an extra card each yeah, turn. Yeah, extra hot cheats so card really, every time. That was yeah. brutal. So. All right, Spencer. Oh, well, I found there were a couple of things in the rules that weren't exactly clear or we had to dig for them to find them. There are a little bit of ambiguities in there. Um, I also had a problem with this thing moving around a little, uh, but I did like the components. I thought the game was good. I was leaning on a 7.5 before you started, <laughs> so I was going to give a 7.5. Trend starter. <laughs> yeah, I should have sure. gone first. <laughs> <laughs> I could have been the trend starter. Um, yeah, so that's... Uh, you guys have said everything that I think sure. yeah, I would have to say about it as well. So, I mean, again, components are great. I, you know, I like these kinds of games. Mm. I, I kind of rather play this than Zombicide. There, there are some things about Zombicide that are really good. Mm. Uh, I like. I prefer like the like the Black Plague version. Yeah, I right? would be, but uh, I would play this either over like the regular base oh, Zombicide yeah. for sure. Um, I love the theme. And I really feel like that this game actually really captures the theme of both Ghostbusters and Men in Black. Mm-hmm. I mean, not just with like, oh, I recognize these characters, but like the the items 
in the game makes sense to the movies, mm-hmm. right? Um, you know, like getting pie, mm-hmm. you know, and things like that. And then <laughs> the ghost, the ghost taxi and Ecto one. And then there's the, there was the uh, Jay's car, right? Or yep, K's yeah. car, yep, yep. you know, push the little red button. So, I mean, there's a lot, there's a, you know, I love custom dice. The dice tower itself yeah. is super amazing. Cool, super yeah, cool mechanic. Nice. Yeah, I just so, want to play other games with that. So, <laughs> My still let Spencer use it. My two, <laughs> my, my two complaints. One of them is the same as everybody else, and then the other one will be kind of meta. Uh, so, so the one complaint, yes, it feels too competitive. I think I might go through the deck and see how how many there are, how much it thins the deck out to take out some of yeah. those cards. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe just take out some of the meanest ones. Right. Um, it says fourteen and up, but I could if I took out some of those cards and just played like a straight co op with my kids. You know, oh, my yeah, daughter be, is almost 10. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, she could play this, right. and we could have a good time. And um, actually, and I think that this is going to be more approachable than the uh, the Cryptozoic Ghostbusters miniatures game, which uh-huh. is kind of similar. It's, but uh, but the, other, the other knock on this, and this is sort of a meta thing, but it just I think everybody should know going into it, is that uh, IDW Games is, is a dead game company they're, they're not making any more games so th- what you get in the book and in the box is what you're getting for campaigns right they're not um, gonna be releasing anything online anytime soon right i mean now there could be fan-made scenarios and sure. you could and someone else could buy it and too. you right it's and true. somebody could pick up the ip like just buy the whole system right and 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 do more add-ons and stuff so that's not out of the question but as of right now this is kind of a dead game right so unlike some of the other dungeon crawly kind of games that are still alive and they're still making stuff for, uh, it is a dead game. But the IP, uh, the, the theme of this, and, and there's enough going on. The miniatures are actually really good quality and better than the Cryptozoic. Uh, the Cryptozoic ones are a little more detailed, but they're way more fragile. Like these guys, I could let these Clark, are chunky. I could let Clark, my four year old, uh, play with these, and I'm not worried about him breaking. They're not as detailed, but they so. work with the style. They work. They're they're perfect with the art style. Yeah. Of the of the game. They also are detailed. Like they're not like super oh, detailed, yeah. but they yeah. they didn't. I mean, they're, they're detailed like, enough. They're as detailed as like Arcadia Quest. Yeah, yeah. Minis, right? Because yeah. they are the kind of that chibi thing. I'm just saying you can make well, these look really good painted. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, plus, if you're you know, a fan of those IPs, there's not going to be a ton of them made too, right? Because if IDW is not around to right. produce them anymore. Yeah, I, I I had two suggestions. The one is obvious. See if you can thin the deck. I think yeah. that's really obvious. The other thing is, I said this right when we started playing. It just seems more thematic and interesting to me. Is again, this game, the theme is really cool. It's really mm-hmm. coming out. The Ghostbusters would never attack or steal from each other. The whole point is they're a tight-knit group of friends. Right. And also, Men in Black would never do that. They're a they're a corporate company who don't even think that way. So I said, have it to where the Ghostbusters can steal from the Men in Black and the Men in Black can steal from the Ghostbusters. Then it also takes uh, map awareness of like, okay, well, if my Ghostbusters next to the Ghostbusters, I can't do anything there, but I could move up my Men in Black guy and, they might and have, steal your they stuff They might have tried and that and found that. Because that yeah, rule yeah, could get fiddly. Yeah, that could be yeah, tricky. It could be. I'm just saying if you're right. going to have competitive in it, I think I that would be the sure. way to or take you it. Or you Two of them are playing both the Men in Black characters, and two of them are playing both the Ghostbusters characters. Uh, no. That's <laughs> true. Then it would be like straight competitive, though. That's right. probably why they did that. But your your player board's made for this. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think well, they landed true. on true. this way for a reason. Uh, but anyways, my rating, yeah, my rating is an eight. I I this could be higher if they could have if the rule book was a mm. little better, a little more streamlined. Yeah. I mean, the player aid we were complaining about it. Uh, it's an easy fix. You could print something out. Yeah. Offline, I'm sure that you could that you could make. Uh, you know, at home. But uh, anyways. So with everybody together, 7.6. Yeah, I mean, this is a, it's a solid game. And I think if any of this sounds good to you or, like, you would want to play, it's a yeah, just you have, get you have, it. You have fun with it. And, and, I, fun with it. and even though I said, like, hey, this is a dead game, there's four, you know, different. There's more than, there's actually more than four different scenarios, and there's a ton of different ways you can play through them. Right, changing up your characters and your party selection. And, and we didn't even get into all the actual equipment, the boss, and people, yeah, equipment and everything. equipment and everything. And there's bosses. I was also blown away that uh, this map kind of looks small, but it was well big enough. Yeah. Right. Well, the map, <laughs> it didn't feel limited oh, yeah, at the all. The map right. looked small, but it was huge. Yeah. yeah. So, there's more map tiles, so this course. is not the full thing. Yeah, correct, yeah, yeah. Correct. This was a scenario. Yeah, there's, like... Yeah, I assume they're, they're all double sided. sided. Yeah. Five more double sided tiles. So yeah, so there's, there's a, a lot l- going on. Make your own scenario. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's a lot going on. A lot of fun things you can do. Anyways, yeah. I had a really good time playing it. Yeah. I again, I like Dan said, enjoyed it more once we realize once we just started playing more cooperatively. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is Ghostbusters. 
Men in Black Ecto Terrestrial Invasion. I think overall, right? Check it out. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's definitely worth it. If it's something, you, fun if it's it. something that sounds good, you don't have a ton of these kind of games. This might be the one for you. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I guess that's it. So yeah. for the board game rundown, I've been Tim. I've been Bob. I've been Spencer. I was Dan. We'll see you next time. Thanks for checking out the board game rundown. If you like what you saw, like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Share our videos on social media and spread the word. We publish new content weekly, including reviews, unboxing, and let's plays. And as always, thanks for watching.